Howdy, howdy, VC. Um, happy New Year to everyone. Hope it was good for y'all. Uh, uh, things continue to be interesting here for me. Uh, all right, uh, going through some records. Uh, I'm getting getting caught up on that little stack back there. Uh, but of course, I filled that box up too. Uh, not all the way. Got some really cool stuff in there. I can't wait to get to it. All right. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it here, guys. Uh, we got, man, Charlie Bird. I am just, every time this is first flight, every time I get one of these, it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, it's nice and little right up on the front. Uh, we've got Charlie Bird on guitar, Tommy Newsom flute and tenor sax, Al Lucas on bass, Bobby Donaldson drums, uh, Rudy Van Gelder, uh, February 4th, 1957. Um, so, show you what it looks like here. It's on Savoy. Golly, this thing had barely been played. Uh, once again, I just I don't do a lot of descriptions on these Charlie Birds because every single Bird album, Charlie Bird album I have gotten, it's just been absolutely phenomenal. Um, it just blows me away every time I hear it. Uh, like uh, the the first side is a, a lot of solo stuff on there, and then the second side, the 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 full band comes in and they are solid. I mean, just solid, uh, amazing. Uh, like I said, I I just keep getting impressed by the uh, Charlie Bird that I pick up. Uh, so get some, you won't be disappointed. Oh, uh, what we got here? We got Les McCann and Eddie Harris, Swiss Movement, recorded live, recorded live at the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland. This is 1969. Uh, my little local local guy here he got me into Les McCann and Eddie Harris. I've talked about him before. He's a military dude, and he said they used to listen to Billy Taylor, Eddie Harris, uh, Les McCann a lot. Uh, I guess in between in between drills and you know sorties and all that good stuff. Uh, let's see, who's personnel on here? We've got um, Les McCann, piano, Eddie Harris, tenor sax, Benny Bailey on trumpet, uh, Leroy Vinegar on bass. That's the best bass player name ever. And Donald Dean on drums. Okay, uh, this is a very spooky sunset vibe, if you will. Uh, I used to go to a thing called Music at Sunset in Winston-Salem, where I'm from, uh, living here now. Piedmont Airlines, baby. Um, it was great. They had a little clamshell amphitheater thing, and we set up blankets and had picnics, and it was called Music at Sunset. This really reminded me of those uh, days when I was younger. It's probably in middle school, uh, maybe late elementary, middle school. Just really good times. I wish they still did it out there, but they don't. Uh, like I said, uh, it's got that little sunset kind of spooky vibe to it. Um, it's a little blues on the first side, uh, but it's more spooky on the second side. Uh, best way I know how to describe that. I actually got another copy of it, so uh, I'm sure my buddy Brad will be getting this second copy. Uh, don't know how I ended up with two. All right, we got Charlie Parker. Uh, I do not have any Charlie Parker. Uh, this is the Savoy Recordings Master Takes. This is a double LP. Uh, I was very, very pleased with the music on here. I'll pull out one of these and show it to you. Got those red Savoy Jazz labels. Uh, man, this thing had never been played either. Got lucky with a lot of my media on these past couple of digs. Just haven't had a lot of scratched up stuff. Uh, been very fortunate on that. Um, so I'll show you the backside 
front side, and we got a gatefold here. Good gosh, I did not read this. I'm sure, you can read it in the three seconds that I put it up there, right? Mm, give you a pan. Um, all right, I was uh, like I said, I don't have any Charlie Parker. I've always wanted to check out some of his stuff. Uh, very upbeat stuff. Uh, and, and happy. So, best way I can describe that. Uh, oh, what era was this? Um, let's see, 44, 45, 47, 48. So, uh, Clyde Hart piano, Tiny Grimes guitar, Jimmy Butts bass, Harold Doc West on drums. I'll just run through a lot of these guys. Miles Davis is on here, Curly Russell, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Max Roach. Sadiq Hakim on piano. Um, who else we got here? Tommy Porter on bass. Bud Powell on piano. Uh, Nelson Boyd on bass. John Lewis piano. Uh, Duke Jordan on piano. Uh, and then looks like that's about it. Uh, but man, good, good stuff. Really happy with that record. Uh, a lot of music on there. All right, next we got Gary Burton and Keith Jarrett. Uh, if you watch my stuff, I'm a big Keith Jarrett fan. Uh, this is on Atlantic. Man, once again, super clean stuff. I have clean. I have cleaned all this stuff, but man, I've been getting lucky lately with the quality of the media on all this stuff. Um, what I say about this record here? I mean, if it's got Keith Jarrett in it, I know I'm probably going to like it. Kind of the same Charlie Bird effect. Um, happy stuff. Uh, kind of light stuff on the first side. Uh, more funky and groovy on the second side. Uh, I think I'm probably going to get rid of this record. Um, I didn't quite like it enough to keep it, I don't think. Uh, but it's got that kind of just happy, easygoing Keith Jarrett feel that most of his stuff does. Uh, all right, I got a got a few Hank Snow records here. Uh, I got really lucky and found uh, these in uh, where was I? I believe I was in. Oh, I'll think about it here in a minute. Let's enjoy a Hawaiian snow. Wonder if that's code for something. Um, RCA Victor. I'm super clean again. Just craziness. Uh, I think it was in Valdez uh, when I got this stuff. That's Valdez, North Carolina. Spelled with a S E, not like the Exxon Valdez. Oh, so I got that one. I'll just pop through these, through these real quick because I got quite a few. I got The Last Ride, Hank Snow. This is on Camden. Mono copy. Uh, I'll show you the back side here. Ah, oh, nothing special, but there it is. Uh, you can't lose with Hank Snow. Excellent uh, singer. Uh, I'm not sure how many songs he wrote. Probably quite a few, because some of them are really funny. We've got the Southern Cannonball. On oh, Camden as well. I believe that's a mono copy. And then, okay, this is the, this is the frickin' best. Look at this cover. Damn. This is Souvenirs. This is probably my favorite one out of the ones that I showed you. But man, what a what a front cover that is. Damn, produced by Chet Adkins. Check that out. Uh, <laughs> there's a song, uh, it's called The Gold Rush Is Over and The Bum Rush Is On. I guess that's, uh, I think that's about uh, him having some money and he was with a girl and then he lost his job or lost his money and Lost his girl, so uh, imagine that. Uh, let's see, I'll pull this one out for you. Uh, RCA Victor. 
God, it's so clean. Just love, love, love me some Hank Snow. Can't get enough. Uh, you got a little quiet night going on and it's a little chilly or a little warm or whatever. Man, drink some, drink some whiskey or some beer. Put this on, man. You will just be a happy, you'd be a happy camper. Um, <laughs> look at that damn eagle on top of the <laughs> wood stove there. God, I love that freaking cover. Uh, let's see if it gives any, uh, uh, any information on who the players were on that. It's mostly just him. Um, okay, this is interesting. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty into accordion Italian stuff. I love Italian food, and I love this style of Italian music. Uh, you got you some bread, some grapes, and some uh, wine, and a little cask looking thing there. This is on Fiesta, uh, and this is really, really freaking good. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about this style of music that I like. It's, it's just kind of like, kind of chamberish sort of deal, but um, hanging out with a lady, making a nice meal, preferably Italian, doesn't have to be. Uh, put this on, man. It really sets the mood. Uh, just gives you gives you good happy vibes. All right, uh, Jack Dejanet's special edition, Tin Can Alley. I have another uh, Jack Dejanet. Uh, Headliner record. Uh, this is on ECM, just like a, all of Keith Jarrett's stuff was. Um, there you go. Golly, just crazy clean, crazy clean. I'm sorry I'm harping on that. I just, I don't know. I guess it's been a while since I had a good string of really clean media in a long time that I didn't have to work on quite a bit. To, to get it in good shape. Uh, who we got on here? We have um, uh, Jack Dejanet, Dejanet uh, Chico Freeman, John Purcell, and Peter Warren. It doesn't say who's playing what, so my, my apologies there. Uh, 1981. And uh, it's, it's kind of free on the first side, kind of free jazz. Uh, it's very loose, uh, not quite noisy, uh, but loose. Uh, man, I cannot read my writing. Oh, oh, and kind of mellow on the first side. The second side is a little looser with kind of the same vibe. Uh, not quite noisy, kind of free, uh, and, and even, oh, I'm sorry, it's a little louder with the same vibe. So just increase the volume, increase the intensity a little bit, and that's kind of what the second side sounds like. It's kind of in that, uh, it's kind of in that Keith Jarrett vein, except he just kind of does his own thing, uh, his own way. Um, man, pick this up at a local junk store down the street. Check this out. Bird at the Gate, live at Village Gate, 1963. Charlie Bird Trio. Ketter Betts on bass, Bill Reichenbach on drums, plus Clark Terry on trumpet, and Selden Powell on tenor sax uh, on a couple of songs here. I uh, got some cool pictures of the guys on the back. Uh, this is on Riverside, stereo. Crazy excited to pick this up. I've never seen this one before. Um, and luckily enough, this was clean as well. Uh, this is a junk store, man. They The records they have in there are in horrible condition. Uh, the guy even sets a lot of them outside and leaves them out in the rain overnight. It's really terrible, but hey, man, you got to do what you got to do, right? Um, do I even have a description on that? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's rowdy on side two. Uh, the, trio, the trio rocks. When it comes to Charlie Bird, uh, he is very strong when he's with his trio. Um, maybe even more so uh, than he is solo, in my honest opinion. Uh, but yeah, rowdy as hell. If you see that, get it. That's that's probably the third best record of this bunch. Uh, and here we've got the the dang. I, I think this guy's from Spain. Uh, 
He's my Spanish version Charlie Bird, uh, Lorindo Almeida. Spanish guitar recital. I think I looked this up. I think this is 70s. But this guy is just, oh man, uh, he's very pretty. Like, he plays the guitar so well, and his stuff's very pretty. But he has a backing, he's got a little backing band too, and it gets kind of like, it gets kind of jazzy, you know? It gets kind of like, uh, not bop, but more like chamber, but, you know, kind of upbeat. Uh, yeah, just... I said it was badass, so there you go. Uh, not much description there. Um, because it, it's like Charlie Bird. I don't really have to have a lot of description because everything that I've gotten from him has been amazing. Uh, we've got Dexter Gordon, the Jumpin' Blues on Prestige. Uh, Dave turned me on to Dexter Gordon, and what I thought was interesting about him was, I guess he went over to, he stayed in, in France and the Netherlands like a long time before he came back to the States. And he stayed over there so long that when he came back to the States, he was still playing like old school type stuff, like 50s, 60s style, but it was in the 70s. Uh, this record is, well, don't know. Uh, we got Dexter Gordon on tenor sax, Wenton Kelly on piano, Sam Jones on bass, Roy Brooks on drums. Excellent, wow. Uh, man, I wish I, remember, I wish I knew what year this was. Um, Here's your labels there. Uh, but yeah, Dexter Gordon, uh, Dave turned me on to him when we lived together. Uh, I really dig his style. He's he's pretty up up front, you know. He 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 really hits the he really really hits the sax hard. Um, and on this record, the sax is really turned up, like in the mix. So if you get that, you. It could be a little hard on your ears, but it's it's good. It's Dexter Gordon, but it is a little loud uh, as compared to the other instruments. Uh, this is hard bop, uh, and it's just it's really really good. Just just uh, excellent stuff. Can't go wrong. So I found this record at a pawn shop in horrid condition, and. Uh, it was missing, it had two of side one, side two records in there. So I, I waited and waited and waited and finally something popped up on Discogs that was that was reasonable and I got this. It's Jackie McLean, Hypnosis. What a great record, man. Um, Get full there. Uh, back it up a little bit. So we got um, Jackie McLean alto sax, Kenny Dorham trumpet, Sonny Clark piano, Butch Warren bass, and Billy Higgins on drums. Uh, 1962. On sides three and four, we have Grocken Moncour on trombone, Lamont Johnson on piano, Scotty Holt on bass, and then Billy Higgins again on drums. Solid players. This is kind of one of those albums that people talk about. Um, I gave you a date, right? Yeah, 67. This is a very, very solid jazz album. If you don't have this in your collection, or if you just want to get into jazz and you're not sure if you like jazz or not, get this. Uh, it, it will, to me, it just represents what jazz should be. It's old school type stuff. Um, I don't know what I say about it here. Uh, uh, it's very unique stuff. Uh, it's 67, so you're kind of getting into that fusion-y kind of deal, but uh, but it, it's still very just unique, and it still ties together. It doesn't get all crazy or anything like that. Uh, it's fast, upbeat, and edgy. Uh, very edgy, this record is. That's probably... Um, that's one of the better records in here. Uh, of this stack. This, however, is the best, no doubt about it. Saturday night, Miles Davis in person at the Black Hawk, San Francisco. I think this is 1961. This is volume two. Um, I'd like to get volume one. This is a re released version by Columbia, limited edition. It's not worth a whole lot, but 
I don't have hardly any Miles Davis because it's all so expensive. Uh, so I was very excited to get this because I do love Miles Davis. Uh, wait till I tell you who's playing on this album and you'll understand why it's the best one out of this bunch. Uh, dude, this stuff is mind, it's mind blowing. That's really the best description I can give on it. You listen to it and you just, you're like, damn, I just have to hear that again <laughs> because it was so wild or so amazing. Um, so yeah, 1961, uh, it's upbeat. Uh, we got, here's the lineup, Paul Chambers on bass, uh, Jimmy Cobb on drums, Wynton Kelly on piano, Hank Mobley tenor sax, come on. That's a stupid crazy lineup right there. I guess I picked up another Hank Snow, The Last Ride. Um, I'll be gifting that to a friend. All right, man, last record in the bunch, which is the second best record in here. Ahmad Jamal, Tranquility. This is so, so solid and so, so good. Uh, this man plays piano with love. That's all I can say. I, you just feel like you're in the same room with him when he plays. I have a lot of Ahmad Jamal. Uh, I have not heard any of it that I don't like. Um, I just listened to this, so I'm still feeling it, man. It is just the most beautiful. I mean, no wonder it's called Tranquility, but just he just plays with so much peaceful emotion. It just it feels so good when you're listening to it. Uh, we got Jamil Suleiman on bass and Frank Gant on drums. Um, what year was this? Uh, I actually believe I did not figure that out. Oh, 1968. Uh, and then, so this is the second best record in this bunch right here. Uh, I mean, nothing's going to touch that Miles Davis, but man, I just, uh, I found some good stuff uh, lately uh, all over the place. I think I went to Wilmington, Valdez, North Carolina. I think some of this stuff came out of Morganton, North Carolina. Uh, so anyway, hey, hope you all have a good new year or a good 2023. Uh, I'm surprised I'm alive after 2022. What a crazy ass year, especially towards the end. Uh, not just me, but for a lot of my friends. Uh, I'm just glad we're all still here, man. So y'all have a good one. Catch you next time.